Here, everybody, not a bad elk, huh? For, especially when you consider this is the very first elk. This is gonna be a do-it-yourself video, basically. We're gonna start out showing you an elk hunt, but we're gonna end up showing you how you can take any big game animal and do a Euro mount out of it real easy and do it yourself. Let's go ahead and get the hunt started. So the elk hunt started off rough for me. Uh, we were hiking a lot and the altitude got me. There was a lot of hyperventilating, but a lot of pretty views. You'd hike up, you'd stop, you'd glass around and look for signs of elk. You'd look at the tracks and just kind of try to figure out where they were going because it was eerily quiet. It was almost too quiet. We kept on walking. We were really quiet. The wind was perfectly in our face. Stopped and we saw a bull staring at us, perfectly broadside, and he was beautiful. I got the shooting sticks up, but by the time we got the camera on him and I was on him, he took off. He outsmarted us big time. He's taking off, he's taking yeah, off. He's gone so So we took off and we went all the way up to the top of this big old mountain and the view was beautiful. So most people on top of a big mountain would just sit there and admire the beautiful view and you know maybe eat some sardines or something like that but my dad is infamous around here for his naps not just here but everywhere and he took a good snooze with the sun on him like a rattlesnake. So the thermals completely changed. We were walking down the mountain and the wind was in our face now, which I wasn't expecting it to. And I was thinking, let's go get some breakfast. The hunt's almost over. We almost get to the truck and y'all aren't gonna believe what happened because I still don't believe it. Up there, right on top there. You got him? Yeah, I'm on him. Okay, just wait a minute, wait a minute. Let that alone move. Okay, he's clear. Go ahead and take him if you like. Okay, fire in the hole. You hit him. I hit him. Is he going down? Oh, yeah, he's going up, he's going up. Come this way. like right in front of me. He's there. He's kicking? Yep. He's down. I think he's dead. Yeah, good job. Congratulations. <gasps> Heck yeah. I was not expecting yeah, that at all. he just walked up, he went running, and he come back and he flipped over. Oh my gosh. Good job. Thank you. Well, let's give him a couple seconds and go see him. He's down right there. Definitely. Oh my gosh. He's oh, not he's... kicking no more, so I think you got yourself a bull. Oh my gosh. It looks like a cow just laying on the ground, a beautiful cow. Yeah, they're big. Just look how big everything about him is. That's oh, a my God. good bull. Thank you. I mean, look at the mass. And look at this. What, do you think he's been rubbing on something? Yeah, just rubbing. God, they're soft. Much softer than I thought they'd oh, be. Oh, yeah. They, I'm just so surprised. I've never actually been up on an elk before, dead or alive, so. So this is all new. What's nice about this place, Quinlan, is that if you don't draw a tag, you can still come hunt. And I mean, being from Texas, the tags confuse me so much. The different places you put in and the point systems, and it's really nice to be able to trust an outfitter and trust that you can get the job done when you invest your time and money into yes. it. All right, so this is what we have. I've got a 55 gallon drum. I wound up, I cut the end of it off, and this is the only thing I could really find handy. I got it filled up with water, okay? And uh, I've got an extra water bucket right down here. This water bucket, I'll explain to you why in a minute. Of course, we've got our elk, and we did a couple of before shots. I want you to see how nasty it is, all the meat, and I mean, everything's stuck to it. It's nasty, it smells bad and all. 
And we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna clean it up for a real pretty European mount. Now, what you're gonna need is some borax soap. And available at grocery stores, just get some borax soap. And you're gonna wind up pouring it in about a cup full into your water. This is already lit. This is a turkey fryer, basically. And all I've done is put, there's probably 20 gallons of water in here. We're gonna heat this up until it starts boiling. And once it starts boiling, we're gonna take the elk, the skull, stick it in and get started. And then I'll tell you what that extra bucket of water is for. I'm gonna put also a couple of these scoops of soda ash in the water just to help treat it. All right, you can tell we've got the water boiling hot. We're gonna take this old nasty skull and carefully set it in the water, just like this. We wanna set it in the water far enough to completely submerge the skull. And the reason why we've got this extra water here is to make sure that when you have evaporation, and clearly it got a little bit of evaporation, I guess it just didn't put enough water in it to begin with, but you want to make sure and have the entire skull covered up with water. And I try to keep the horns out of the water as much as possible. So that water was cool. It dropped that temperature back down. So we're just going to go ahead and remove the skull at this point, let the water heat back up, and then we'll go ahead and get the process started. I just didn't have enough water to get started. All right, so it's been an hour. It's time to pull it out. Oh, look at it. You can see where everything's starting to peel off the bone. All the meat, all the nasty starting to peel off. Let's let it drip here a second. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and take it to the next step. All right, so the next step before we do it, I wanna show you, look how soft a lot of this is. It just, cause it cooked in there for an hour. Uh, Everything's really pretty soft on here. So what we, it's, it's almost, you could take a knife and you could actually scrape a lot of this stuff off, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to do this. But uh, people say, what if you put it in for longer than an hour? The longer you cook a bone, the more brittle it becomes and you don't want that. So an hour is about all I like to do. All right, so you need a pressure washer for this. The one thing I encourage you to do is experiment. Start with the widest spray nozzle that you have, because if you put too much pressure on the bone, it's gonna be damaging to the skull. You don't wanna do that. So start with the widest nozzle that you have and start from far enough away that you really don't do any damage to the bone. We've got the nasal cavity pretty well cleaned out and you'll notice the ivories are hanging loose now. What we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the ivories out, save them and we'll glue them in when we finish. All right, let's take a look at it now. It took about probably eight to 10 minutes, I guess, on the pressure washer. And at this point, I mean, take a good close look at it. I mean, you can see it's so much better than it was than when we got started. I mean, we're still a long ways from being done, but boy, is that an improvement right there. The next step at this point, I like to take it out and uh, get a small knife and just start picking away at it. Pick any little piece of meat that you still see on it off of it. Every head is different as far as how much time it's going to take you to clean the little pieces off. And so an elk head, of course, is going to have a little bit more surface area. So I'm going to spend whatever time is necessary in order to get the little pieces of meat out of the little crevices that were left. But you want to keep at it, get the as much meat off of it as you can. And then what I like to do, I like to put it out in the sun. Now, depending upon where you live, of course, with humidity being different, if you live in a humid area, it might take longer. If you live out in Arizona or California where it's not as humid, it won't take as long, but I like to let the skull dry out. Okay, put it in the bright sun, let it dry out, and that way anything that is left on the bone, you're gonna be able to see after it dries out. So we're gonna do that with this right now and probably pick it back up in about another week and see, uh, see how it looks before we start the next process. This thing uh, is gonna look really good when we get done. It's not a quick process, but it is an easy process. 
All right, here's what it looks like. Uh, now, I have not used any bleach on it. If I wanted to use bleach on it, I'd use a product that uh, is available in most beauty supply stores. But right now, uh, all this is is just Mother Nature's bleach from the sun. I'm gonna show you what I do now to put this on the wall. All right, so once you've got your skull ready to hang on the wall, how do you hang it on the wall easily? I use the skull hooker and I'm gonna show you why. I mean, I've got them in my office everywhere. These are the simplest, classiest ways to hang securely any skull. And so, you know, I wanna point something out like this right here. I've got a really nice white tail on the skull hooker here. And I've got, I've literally, I have them all over my office, but you know, shoulder mounts, I mean, shoulder mounts are, are awesome, but they take up a lot of room. But the, the cool thing that I like about doing the skull mounts, they don't take up as much room, but not only does skull hooker make the mount for the skulls, but take a look at this one right here. This right here, I mean, it, it swivels back and forth as well, but I cut the skull off right here. And so it's literally just a skull cap. So these products are available for uh, whether you have a full skull or a skull cap set of antlers. And I'm gonna show you how it works on the elk right now. First off, the skull hooker comes with all the parts needed. You're gonna need a few tools. What I like to do is I like to take a tape measure and measure to make sure that I'm gonna have enough distance once I get the skull hung on the wall. Next, I'm gonna mark the holes, and then if I need to, I'll take a drill motor, drill the holes out, and then secure the anchor system to the wall. Next, just attach the plate of the skull hooker to the wall, and then drop the adjustable mounting arm in place, and make sure that you have the prong adjusted to the proper angle. Then, you're good to go. Now it's time to hang up our mount. We're gonna hang it right here on the prong. Just take a look at this. You can take and you can angle this now any way you want, just like this. It hangs nice and secure, and uh, that's a pretty slick way to do Euro mounts. If you have any questions or comments about this video, go ahead and post them below. And if you want to contact Skull Hooker, we have a link down in the description below over to their site. They make all kinds of cool products. Anybody who's interested in hanging Euro mounts needs to use a Skull Hooker. My name's Keith Warren, and make sure and subscribe to our channel.